Well, there's Kamala Harris kind of basking in the, uh, well, she's running for the nomination. A good chunk of the Democrat Party is coalescing around her, it seems. Is this really going to come off? Anyway, you probably know how I feel about her. And uh, I really got some amazing insight into Kamala Harris because I read Peter Schweitzer's book, Profiles in Corruption, Abuse of Power by America's Progressive Elite. I just read it before she had been uh, selected as Biden's VP four years ago, and I'm so glad I did. Peter Schweitzer joins us now, the great investigative journalist slash author slash uh, government watchdog. Welcome back, Peter. Um, overall, before we talk Kamala, just what do you think about how this all went down and Joe Biden departing the race? Uh, it all seems obviously weird and kind of unprecedented. What are you thinking overall? Uh, my theory is, is that this is really a uh, Barack Obama-induced coup, uh, in effect. Um, you know, Barack Obama bragged in 2020 to Stephen Colbert that um, he didn't want to serve a third term, but he'd love to sort of be in the background during somebody else's third term and have them carry out his policies. Uh, people interpret Joe Biden's uh, first term as Obama's third term. I don't think that's the case. They're not particularly close. They don't like each other. Uh, and when there was weakness with Biden uh, in the debates, uh, I think Barack Obama took the opportunity uh, and he's the one that steered it. Uh, as, as you know from reading the book, uh, Kamala Harris and the Obamas go way back before he was a U.S. senator, and she would certainly be much more in tune with uh, carrying water for Barack Obama than Joe Biden would be. Yeah, it, it would be like she's still working for him. Um, all right, what do we need to know about uh, her? Uh, I think in your book, you document how she came to power. And quite frankly, uh, a big chunk of it had to do with her extramarital relationship with Willie Brown. She wasn't married, but he was. And they carried on in public. Willie Brown, a big shot in California and hooked her up with all kinds of jobs. Yeah, that's right. Uh, he was Speaker of the California Assembly at the time. Uh, she started dating him. She was 29. He was 60. He was actually a couple years older than her own father. Um, and because he was the Speaker of that California Assembly, he hooked her up on several government commissions. One paid, I think, $90,000 a year. She had to show up once a month in Sacramento for that gig. She got another gig that, I, if I recall, paid $112,000 a year. Again, she had to show up once a month in Sacramento. She bought him a BMW. Uh, then when he ran for mayor of San Francisco, the night that he was elected, uh, the romantic relationship stopped. Uh, a lot of debate about who ended it. Most of the consensus seems to be that he's the one that ended it. But then in 2003, uh, she made a, a political announcement to run for the California district attorney uh, uh, position. Uh, and Willie Brown's political machine is the one that put her uh, in office. He raised a ton of money for her. Uh, he uh, had his political machine behind her. And that's what really created uh, Kamala Harris. So they remain uh, connected socially uh, as friends. Uh, in fact, Willie Brown is still singing her praises and has even called on uh, the current president, um, Joe Biden, to step down so Kamala can be uh, the sitting president as well. Wow. Uh, so, uh, hey, by the way, do you think she's got it locked? We know she's close with Obama and Obama's kind of running things. You sense any potential hiccups in this plan? You know, Michelle possibly getting in. I mean, does she really pull all that well? It's kind of outside your area, but I don't know. I mean, she was such a goofball for the first two years. She kind of laid low. She's not good at her job, right? Uh, she's not. Uh, she's certainly not good at campaigning. We saw that in 2020. You know, every previous political race she's ever had, it was in basically a one party state, which is California. So I don't know how good she's going to be on the campaign trail. They may revert to what they did with Joe Biden of a sort of quasi basement strategy where they keep her very controlled and very, very limited. Uh, but the money is showing up. A lot of money is flown in, into the campaign with Joe Biden's resignation. I think that was the only other concern. And the Obamas really control the Democratic Party these days. Uh, the Clintons are old news. Um, so I think if the Obamas are happy with her, and I think they are, um, she uh, is going to be the nominee and on the ballot in November. I don't think Michelle Obama is a viable alternative. 
uh, by all accounts from people that know her. She hates politics. She does not like politicking. She does not like the rough and tumble. Um, so as appealing as it is, uh, Michelle Obama wants to be America's mom. She does not want to be America's president. So Kamala Harris is the one that they're going to ride to uh, in November. Well, if she wants to be America's mom, she's uh, there's a little bit of child neglect going on. I don't think she's in America all that often. She's jetting off to all kinds of places and kind of an absentee mom. All right, final thing here. Um, we know that Joe Biden is compromised. I mean, everybody in the world knows that. And the China stuff that you reported and these weird checks from his brother and who knows what else. Do you think when they were trying to convince him to uh, step down that things got a little hardball behind the scenes? Look, they weaponized the DOJ against uh, Donald Trump and many others. They could conceivably do the same thing to Joe Biden. You know, do you want to have a nice post-presidency or do you want things to get really ugly? Yeah, my theory on this, I don't have any hard proof, but I think we probably will in a few months, uh, is I think that Joe Biden basically negotiated an exit package for himself and for his family. Uh, in other words, when the big money people came to him and said, Joe, it's time to go, uh, they basically staked out a hard position as a negotiating strategy. And I think that we're going to see over the next six months or so uh, that members of his family get consulting deals. Joe gets some deals of his own. Uh, so they are all taken care of financially. Uh, this is what Joe Biden's been, uh, been about since 1972 when he ran for political office. And I don't think there's any reason to suggest that he was not doing the same thing here. A hard line was the best negotiating strategy, and I'm sure they extracted some uh, lucrative concessions uh, out of him stepping down. That's pretty wild. By the way, is that legal? It's probably not. It's pro or maybe it's just kind of a, 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 a wink and a nod. You know, you don't write these things down, but it's understood. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's, well, you know, I'm just looking ahead. If I do step down, what will the family do? Oh, I think Bill over here might have an opening. We can put you in touch with Bill. Yeah. They're very good about doing this in a way where it's not exactly a quid pro quo, but the end result is the same. A deal has been made. Peter Schweitzer, thank you very, very much. Your last book, Blood Money, was awesome. When's the next one? What are you working on? Uh, I'm working on something right now, but I'm not ready to say, but I will let you know uh, as we get closer. All right. I have a feeling it's dynamite, as it always is. Peter Schweitzer, thank you very much, and uh, we'll be right back.